problem is all inside your head, she said to me. The answer is easy if you take it logically. I'd like to help you in your struggle to be free. There must be 50 ways to leave your lover. She said it's really not my habit to intrude. Furthermore, I hope my meaning won't be lost or misconstrued. But I'll repeat myself. At the risk of being crude, there must be 50 ways to leave your lover. Make a new plan, stay home. You don't need to be coy, Roy. Just keep yourself free. I'm on the bus, cause you don't need to discuss much. Just drop off the TV. She said it grieved me so to see you in such pain. I wish there was something I could do to make you smile again. I said I appreciate that. Would you please explain about the 50 ways? Welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. And thank you to those of you who have supported my channel by liking and subscribing. Your support allows me to continue to bring you fountain pen reviews as I'm unsponsored on this channel, so thanks. And yes, today's pen is yet another Pen BBS fountain pen. Fans of Pen BBS will be pleased because I have another two Pen BBS fountain pens on the way. One is this Pen BBS 491. And the other is yet another brand new model for 2021 from Pen BBS, the 348, which seems to be a cross between a Pen BBS 308 and a Wingsung 601, as it has the Wingsung's piston vacuumatic filler system. When the Pen BBS 348 gets here, I'll be doing another collaboration video review with my friend Alan Light of What I Ink. And for those of you that think I do too many Chinese fountain pen reviews, You'll be pleased to know that in February, we'll be visiting India with this Ranga Model C, Japan with this Pilot Elite, and this Pilot 78G, and Germany with this Lamy Studio Palladium, and even this Chinese American Cross Bailey. Well, at least the name is American. But right now, I'm going to look at this new Pen BBS 380. This is my first metal Pen BBS fountain pen, and I blame the purchase on Chris Rapsaic. You know him better as Chris Rap 52. He was concerned my Pen BBS experience was too limited to the acrylics and suggested I get a metal pen. Well, here it is the Pen BBS 380 Silver Velvet. So let's do Chris a favor and expand our Pen BBS horizons right now. And it's a double package day for me today. I've got this package from Pen BBS and another package which I'm not sure what it is. So let's open the Pen BBS package first. Ooh, and I got a cat sticker this time. A new picture of Amber. She's peeking over the laptop. That's cute. <laughs> this is not an Amber pen though. So here is a 380. And this is in uh, what, what silver velvet it's called. And it's a fine of course. Take off the sleeve. And our typical Pen BBS cardboard box with the red surround. These are really nice gift boxes. They have a really nice chevron kind of 
uh, shape to the front flap and it's magnetic and we open it up and we see that the metal pen comes with a rollerball attachment so that's a rollerball insert uh, you can change out your fountain pen for a rollerball why you'd want to do that I don't know but here's the pen I've often admired this on the Etsy site because it is a swirling design rather than just being faceted it has a twist to it interesting we shall see and what I'd like to do today is go over the parts and features of this pen show some size comparisons some measurements and then provide a writing sample and after the writing sample please stay tuned as I will talk about what I like and what I don't like so much about this fountain pen first let's discuss why I prefer acrylic over metal fountain pens there are a few factors that make me wary of a metal fountain pen and they are a slick sections two weight C cold to the touch and F balance let's look at this pen and see whether any of these come into play overall this is a very cool design it isn't just faceted the facets are in a spiral which give the pen an almost hypnotic effect as you twirl it if you dare look into the hypnotic eye the pen is nicely symmetrical curving up to the middle and then back down again towards the end the top is flat and has pen BBS 380 embossed into it with two stars the cap tapers up with the ten-sided spiral swirl and there is a seam right there which is perfectly matched up and is the division between the cap finial and the rest of the cap and shows where the pen BBS sword clip is held in place I just want to stop and editorialize here for a moment while I think of this here we are here we are all right everybody oh, cram up Archie Bunker, so speaking in reply to the editorial broadcast last Saturday good evening everybody <laughs> this is uh, Archie Bunker speaking on behalf of guns for everybody now I want to talk about another thing that's on everybody's mind today and that's your stick ups in your sky jackets if that was up to me I could end the sky jackets tomorrow you could all you got to do is arm all your passengers they just pass out the pistols at the beginning of the trip and they pick them up again at the end Page close. this pen BBS sword clip is now ubiquitous on pen BBS pens of course as I say that the new model 348 which has just come out has a clip like the 308 but this sword clip is pretty standard on pen BBS now now does this clip look like any other fountain pen clip design to you I've got the sword of Azeroth there is no more Sheldon I am the sword master since the Chinese are constantly being accused of copying their designs from others where does this clip design come from and while we're at it where does this ten-sided spiral faceted design come from is it from Italy Germany perhaps some of you can enlighten me as to where the design of this pen was stolen it seems to me that it wasn't I know the Visconti Divina elegance has a spiral design but it's five-sided and the facets are concave and the pen is a thousand bucks but this 380 is fantastic looking a uniquely shaped fountain pen and while we're at the clip here's another nice variation this is my first sword clip in this matte gold finish it sets off from the matte silver colored blasted aluminum body of the pen beautifully in my opinion I can't be more pleased with the look of this pen the clip is springy and usable as usual the cap continues to curve and spiral up to the almost seamless division between the cap and the barrel the facets line up when the pen is closed more about this later and if we get a little closer you can see 
that the points of the facets have been slightly eased to an extremely fine degree to keep them from being sharp. This is a top quality attention to detail here, both in design and engineering. Kudos to Long and his design and engineering team for all these wonderful details that tend to go unseen and unmentioned. The barrel continues to curve and spiral down to a flat bottom. The cap unscrews with one, two, and a half turns, which is right on the outside of tolerable. Again, it bears repeating. Two and a half turns doesn't sound like a lot, but in actual practice, no one uncaps their pens like that. I challenge you, do you uncap your pens like that? I don't. You uncap your pens like this, and what you get is about a half a turn to three quarters of a turn with each movement. And that means when you uncap this pen, you're going one, two, three, four, either four or one, two, three, four, five turns. That's a lot. Here is my Opus Bella 88. The only thing that makes me crazy about this pen is the three full turns. One, two, three full turns to uncap it. Not so much that three is bad, but it translates into one, two, three, four, five five and sometimes six turns one two three four five six to uncap it and one two three four five six seven eight to recap it and it's a real pain in the ass but once uncapped the 380 reveals a tapering section of the same textured silver aluminum with a small flare towards the number six size steel pen bbs nib this one is of course a fine mini food a style and one of the two-tone gold and chrome variety uh, like that on the 456 model and there is the plastic feed the nib and the feed are friction fit inside a plastic uh, collar assembly that easily screws in and out of the section to be cleaned replaced or swapped let's get a closer look at this nib this is a typical pen bbs fine nib with pen bbs since 2005 and an F for fine and China at the bottom and the typical pen BBS filigree border in gold the back of the section has the cap threads which are very fine and not sharp at all but this step down edge of the barrel is sharp and affects my grip substantially the section unscrews to reveal the included pen BBS converter these converters are also a bit of quality detail from pen bbs as many chinese pens in this price range will provide very basic converters these converters from pen bbs have reinforced nipples and metal connectors the pen bbs 380 will accept a lamy long cartridge that you can force in there because it is metal um, and it shaves some of those edges down and they will also take a Parker long cartridge there's the Parker long and again you have to sort of shave the edges of the nipple off I'm petrified of nipple chafing my nipples is starting come on God watch the nipples Kevin this has been around for a thousand years ouch be careful with that <laughs> and it will accept a Parker short in the section and a, another Parker short in the caboose oh, what was that? A preview? <laughs> now that's just getting dirty it should go without saying that this pen can't be eyedroppered because of the metal content here inside of the cap shows a black plastic liner which houses the threads for the cap and there's also a small step in there that lines up with the top of the section to give it a good seal I should mention that the cap threads here are plastic and the threads on the section are metal and over tightening this cap could end up distorting that plastic and causing misalignment with those facets when you close it so be careful of over tightening this pen Today is Toulouse-Lautrec's birthday, 
and I bought him a belt, and I said, is that belt too tight to lose? <laughs> the cap posts deeply and securely, but it uh, severely back weights this pen uh, because that cap is uh, fairly heavy. And it also makes it extremely long in the hand. I would not recommend actually posting this pen at all, as when you post this pen, you are pushing those facets up against those plastic threads, and it might damage those plastic threads inside there, causing some capping issues. Just my two cents. But unposted, the pen is plenty long enough and is beautifully balanced in the hand. Now, this is where I have some issues. I tend to grip my pens further back so that my nib is further away from the page. I know others like to grip the pen closer to the nib. If that is your grip, this pen will be fine. That section is plenty long enough for most grips, and it's not slick at all. The texture on that aluminum provides a really nice grip. However, for my grip, uh, to avoid that sharp step down, I have to hold the pen uncomfortably close to the nib right here. My only other option is to hold the pen with my thumb on one of those facets back here on the barrel, uh, which is nice and smooth. Uh, however, now my index finger rests on one of those sharp edges and my middle finger holds underneath on those threads. And so I'm finding it uh, uh, rather difficult to find a place on this pen that's actually comfortable to write with for long writing sessions. It's a bit of a challenge. I wrote with this pen for an hour yesterday and I couldn't get comfortable with it at all. Plus when you pick up the pen to start it's very cold to the touch. It does warm up fairly quickly uh, but when you first touch it, especially in the winter, it is fairly cold. Even to a guy like me that's cold. This pen retails for $34.99 US in the official Pen BBS Etsy shop and is currently not in stock. I actually had to wait quite a while for this one to become available because most of them actually come with a medium nib instead of the fine, which I prefer. Now let's look at some size comparisons. And here we are with the Pen BBS 380 with a Moonman T1, a Wingsung. 601 Flighter, a Faber-Castell Loom, and a Bauer 057. Now let's look at them posted. And here they are posted. You can see that both the Pen BBS 380 and the Moonman T1 are very long when they're posted. Uh, they're both number six size nibs. The uh, Wingsung 601 Flighter has this upgraded section on it that's usually black plastic. I upgraded it to stainless steel and it posts very deeply and nicely. And of course it's a hooded nib. And the Faber-Castell and the Bauer are both number five size nibs. Now let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample. <music> we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Clairefontaine 90 GSM paper and this is the Pen BBS three eight zero silver velvet and it is a fine steel nib and the ink today is Noodler's Blue American Eel. I don't think I've ever seen a blue eel. Now let's check the wetness. Now, this is relatively dry. 
Now here is an image of the pen right out of the box the first time I inked it. As you can see, I did the push technique a few times to get the pen wetter. It worked a little, but not much. So I flossed the nib with a .004 inch shim and it got a little bit better. I'm surprised it hasn't got much better as this usually works on these nibs. So I'm beginning to suspect that this Noodler's ink, like many Noodler's ink, is dry in itself. And the ink seems to dry very, very quickly. So if you'll excuse me for a moment, I'm going to clean out the pen and re-ink it with Erosha Zuku Asagao. I know that ink flows beautifully and is also nicely wet. So talk amongst yourselves. Talk amongst yourselves. And now we're back with the re-inked pen and let's give it a try. Yeah, that's about what I expected it to be after I pushed it that many times, that it would be that wet. It ended up being that wet, and I believe that's just due to the Noodler's dry ink. So our ink now is Hiroshizuku Asagao. Here is the swatch for the Asagao alongside the Noodler's Blue American Eel. You see there's a lot more purple in this ink. This is more of a greenish shade of blue. And there's another uh, close match to the Roshizuku Asagao. It's Visconti Blue. So this nib is typical of most every Pen BBS fine nib I've used and it is very smooth. It has needed no uh, micro mesh. It needed a little bit of a push to get it that wet, uh, but it's uh, writing beautifully right now. And this line, it, by my Richard Binder chart, is a 0.5 millimeter which is where I expected it to be. And that is a Western fine and a Japanese almost medium. As to line variation, well, again, I showed you pushing this nib. It's very stiff. And that's why you should not try to flex it and you should be careful if you're going to be pushing it like I did to get it wetter. Be careful you don't spring that nib. Chinese steel is very stiff. And for our quote, and for some reverse writing, That's very scratchy. Wow. And it's digging up the page. And some quick writing. And it's keeping up very, very nicely. And now it's flowing nicely with that Orochizuku in there. We interrupt this program to bring you a special report. And I would be remiss if I didn't show you, at least demonstrate, the rollerball insert for this 380. It does come with a rollerball nib, and all you do is unscrew the fountain pen nib and screw in the rollerball insert, and you use the same cartridge converter and ink. And then let's give this a try. Let's check the wetness. Hey, 
Look at that. And it's very smooth, very roller. Yeah, it works very nicely. No line variation, but it's a roller ball. We now return you back to your regularly scheduled program. We now return control of your television set to you until next week at the same time when the control voice will again take over. Until then, please stand by. So, what do I like and what do I not like about this fountain pen? Well, there's a lot to like about this fountain pen. Visually, I think it is intriguing, fascinating, hypnotic, eye-catching, whatever flourish of florid hyperbole you wish to give it. And let's not forget the tactile. This pen is lovely to hold, spin, and touch. The texture is satisfying, and those spiral facets feel luxurious in the hand, not to mention the heft of this pen. The design, engineering, and craftsmanship of this pen is just outstanding. I'm sure there are other pens out there that may be similar in design and shape, but I bet none of them are only 40 bucks. In the hand and unposted, the pen is beautifully balanced. And that is important because this isn't a light pen at 22 grams unposted. So balance is everything, as we saw with the Moonman M1000. The fine mini Fude nib writes smooth and beautiful as most of them do in my experience. The attention to detail is extraordinary, but there's one place I wish they would have used a little bit more detail, and that is the top edge of this barrel. I mentioned that the edge of the cap was eased off so the points of the facets weren't so sharp, and it isn't that sharp on the cap. But it seems that this barrel didn't get the same treatment, or as fine a treatment anyway. And that's a shame because this edge right here is what spoils this pen for me and why I won't be writing with it, unfortunately. I cannot for the life of me get comfortable with this step. It's one of the reasons I dislike the Pilot Metropolitan, but at least the Metro's step doesn't feel like it's going to cut into my thumb. This is very sharp. Again, if you grip the pen closer to the nib, then this pen will be fine for you as that section is plenty long enough to get a nice grip with your thumb. So another pretty pen to adorn my shelf next to my Moonman M1000. Another one of the quibbles I have are the two and a half turns to get this pen uncapped. I understand the mechanics here uh, to keep the threads fine and smooth on that section. Uh, there need to be more turns to secure it, especially a heavy metal pen like this with all this mass. But that is defeated for me with this sharp step. My suggestion would be to use fewer threads and put a silicone gasket right in here as uh, Jinhao is doing recently with their Centennial. But that would need a thread stop to keep the facets lining up as they do. Oh well, it keeps you pen scientists and engineers off the streets or God forbid going to parties with regular folks. And such generators were often used to break the ice at parties by making all the molecules in the hostess's undergarments simultaneously leap one foot to the left, in accordance with the theory of indeterminacy. Many respectable physicists said that they weren't going to stand for that sort of thing, partly because it was a debasement of science, but mostly because they didn't get invited to those sort of parties. My final bugaboo about this pen is how cold the metal is to the touch. Perhaps a USB version that you can plug in to warm it while it sits waiting to be used. In those days, I was only a tea boy. Oh, but... shut up. Yeah, okay, I'll shut up now. And there you have it. If you liked this video, please like and subscribe, and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And that just leaves it for me to say... Thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote. I made this.